Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Premier Football Podcast on PFP Media. I'm your host, Rafe Garland, joined as always by Joe Doherty. Uh, obviously, the major talking point of the weekend, the big one, as it was dubbed on, on Sky Sports, uh, Liverpool versus Manchester United. Joe, an incredibly lively affair, goals flying in at both ends. Uh, not the case. Yeah, Rafe, it was, uh, it was a big disappointment. It was a damp squib. It was... Uh... You know, Liverpool started fairly brightly, but they, there was no cutting edge to their play throughout the game. And then Man United grew into the game uh, after about half an hour and they United were the better team for the rest of the match. I, I thought Liverpool were very disappointing. Um, th- there are some positives to take from for, for Liverpool. Fabinho was unbelievably good at centre half Allison stepped up when when he needed to. And uh, Thiago looked very comfortable uh, in midfield, but on Thiago, as good as he is, I think he's a little bit of a problem for Liverpool as well because the other players aren't used to playing with someone like that in midfield. And as good as his passing is and his his vision and how he moves the ball, I just don't think that the other players are used to him yet. And, they're, and, and they don't seem to be on the same wavelength in, in the way that they would be if a Jordan Henderson or a, or a Fabinho was playing in that in that six role. Because Fabi, uh, sorry, Thiago, he, he was playing as a six but he wasn't playing as a six he was drifting everywhere he wants to be in he wants to pick up he wants to get into space which is completely different to what uh henderson and fabinho do when when they play in the six um and i suppose it 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 just take it'll just take time for liverpool to get used to playing with with uh tiago instead of a more um conservative number six yeah, certainly. It'll take him time to adapt, obviously, to the to the English game as well, and and to listen to what Jurgen Klopp's asking him to do. But I suppose the the other issue for the Liverpool players is that it's not just one new addition in midfield. They were playing a new shape yesterday. I know they have played four two three one before, um, but they they've had to move away from the four three three that they've played so rigidly for the past maybe three seasons because of the injuries that they've had in, in center back, they've now dropped two of their starting midfielders back and it, it's, an, it's displaced the, the entire shape of the team. So not only are, were they trying to um, pick up some sort of relationship with, with tag with Thiago and Shakiri, who started his first game in over a year yesterday, but they were also trying to adapt to a new shape with, with new bodies at, at center half. And you, you could tell, that it wasn't the the well-oiled, uh, slick machine from from Liverpool that, that we're used to seeing. Um, from United's perspective, I mean, they would have taken a draw before the game. Yeah, of course they would have. Um, and th- they only really kind of tried to win the game towards the end. I suppose that was the game plan, though, was hold out for 60, 70, 80 minutes. And then if we can get something later on in the game, we'll, we'll try to get it. I actually feel like United should have won the game. Pogba had a great chance. I think it was about the 83rd minute um, where he had a volley from about eight yards out and he hit it straight at, at, at Alisson. A lot of people were saying great save. And I mean, he saved it, but he didn't have to move. So I feel like if you don't have to move to make a save, uh, even if it's only from eight yards out, it's not it's not that big a deal. But, you know, he did his job very well. Um, but yeah, I feel like United would be a bit disappointed not to have come away with all three points in the end. And that's that's really strange because because Liverpool have been so dominant in these fixtures in recent years. It was it was really weird to watch. I don't know as a Liverpool fan. I don't know how how you felt because it, I didn't feel as a, as a neutral fan watching um, that this was the same Liverpool, which is mad because it's the most of the players are the same players and the players they brought in are class. So it just doesn't really it doesn't add up that they're playing like this. Um, yeah, it's well, like, I, I it's suppose like, like, like I said there, the, the players are all playing in new positions. There are new people that haven't played in a long time coming into the team. And at the same time, you've got to give credit to Manchester United, who are top of the league for a reason. They have been solid defensively. They have been worrying teams on the break. Liverpool obviously had to had to bear in mind that United could counter-attack. Trent Alexander-Arnold played a lot deeper than we've seen him play in games. They were obviously weary of the pace down the left-hand side. He wasn't bombing forward. Shakiri was occupying quite a, a, a wide role out there, drifting in between a central position and a wide position to, to help cover that flank as well. So Liverpool did give a lot of respect to Manchester United in, in that sense. And United did defend quite doggedly at times. I, I know they gave the ball away a couple of times at the back trying to play out, um, but they, they didn't concede. They managed. They always managed to get 
a body in the way. I think Liverpool only registered a couple of shots on target um, and, and, and none that really troubled the goalkeeper. You can think of Thiago's long range shot and, and one that Firmino ran onto and, and passed straight to straight to De Gea from about 10 yards out. But other than that, they, they didn't really create any clear goal scoring opportunities. So I suppose you, you do have to give credit to the defensive resilience of, of United as well. Yeah, you do. But again, Liverpool looked like, like as I said about Thiago, Thiago had a good game. He did. He did everything that he needed to do, um, in in the sense that he was controlling things. He he by far made the most passes on the pitch, and almost all of them were accurate. He also made loads of interceptions, so he had a good game. But it was everything that was going on ahead of him, because it's not his job to 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 play through balls, really, is it? It's his job to to put people into spaces to play through balls and to and to then create chances. Yeah, the the pre-assist. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. But it was the the, the lack of uh, understanding between the front three and I think confidence. There are a couple of times where Firmino got in great positions and he just doesn't look like someone who's able to take it on and and, and put the ball in the back of the net. There are a couple of times, one where he got, he got, he had a chance on his left foot from just outside the box and he hit a horrible shot well wide. And there was another chance he got in on the left-hand side and he could have smacked it across, across goal with his left foot first time, which a, a confident striker would have done, but he cut back onto his right and was then looking for a pass and United got players back and the, and the, and the chance was lost. Um, it wasn't just for me, you know, Salah looked off. Um, Mane was making good runs, but I don't really remember him doing anything productive. I remember him getting the ball in in uh, good positions in the on the on the left hand side and and not creating anything out of it. It's they, it's not, it's just not happening for the front three at the moment, um, and it's come at the wrong time with Jota out because Jota would. Um, the way Jota was playing before, he was making a real difference. Excuse the noise in the background. Uh, the way Jota was playing before, he was making a real difference. And I feel like it would be easier for Klopp to leave one of his main front three out or to play a 4-2-3-1 if Jota was fit. Well, I suppose the other thing is that Zenden and Shaqiri started the game, sharted the game. <laughs> and he, uh, he played really, really well. He, he was maybe their, their liveliest uh, attacking threat in the first half. So if if he was to be considered as maybe a rotational player for one of the front three, if he was to start on the right, that gives you the opportunity to start Mane or Salah through the middle and, and rest Firmino or, or rest one of the wingers instead. And maybe he could help tie over that um, that gap that Jot has left for the, for the next few weeks while, while Liverpool are, are waiting to have him back. So I suppose that that is a positive that comes out of the game. I don't think a lot of Liverpool fans would have expected him to start the game. And I certainly don't think a lot of Liverpool fans would have expected him to play so well. I, th- I think um, we both watched the, uh, watched the game and we were saying at halftime that he was Liverpool's uh, best attacking threat. He was the one that looked like he was going to go and, and get a goal. So maybe it's time for, for someone like him to, to step up and, and prove his worth because he's 29 years old now. And we all know the talent that, that he has, and maybe it's time for him to go out and, prove why Liverpool have been paying his wages for the last three years. I completely agree. I, I really Five like, years even. I, I, I completely agree. I really like Shakiri. Um, I, I have a soft spot for the Swiss national team. I, co- I have cousins who live in Switzerland. Um, you know, reasons like that. I, you have your sisters with an Italian uh, guy. I'm sure that you have an affinity for, for Italy because of that maybe, or at least for Roma. And I do know that. You, you pick up these teams for familial reasons. Um, so I always keep a close eye on Switzerland when they're playing in major tournaments. And Shakiri is uh, their best attacking player and he, he's an absolute joy to watch. He scored a phenomenal goal in the World Cup to beat Serbia. So did, actually interesting, so did Granit Xhaka that day, obviously two, uh, two ethnic Albanians. So they would have been very happy to, 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 beat, to beat Serbia. But he's always, he's always had an abundance of talent. I mean, he played for Bayern Munich. And Liverpool snapped him up from Stoke for like thirteen million pounds, and honestly, for someone of his quality, that's a, that's a bargain. I think he's been very unlucky with injuries, and he would have been playing more over the last couple of seasons if it hadn't been for for injuries. I I I, I was sure he was going to score yesterday. Do you remember a couple of seasons ago against Mourinho's Man United, Shakiri came on and scored twice to to win the game for Liverpool and to get Mourinho sacked. And to get Mourinho sacked, yeah, I thought I thought something similar was happening yesterday that he was going to be the man of the moment. Um, it, it wasn't to be, but I would continue. I would persevere with him. I thought I saw enough yesterday uh, to suggest that he should be uh, 
staying in the team. And I thought he was unlucky to get taken off. I don't know if that's because he'd played such little football over, in, in recent weeks that his body's not quite there. Um, but I thought out of the front four, he was by far the the best. He was the one who was, who was looking like he might create something out of nothing. Yeah, and the rest of them. I, I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see him get the start again um, at home to Burnley midweek. Now, look, I, I, I don't want to talk about Liverpool for too long. Quickly, I want to run through their fixtures over the next month before the Champions League restarts. They host Burnley uh, midweek. They go to United in the FA Cup. They go to Spurs. They go to West Ham. They host Brighton. They host Manchester City. And then they go to Leicester City. It's a pretty difficult run of fixtures other than maybe hosting Brighton and hosting Burnley. Liverpool have a lot to do over the next month if they're serious about winning the Premier League this year. And I think this will be the month that really separates the the the, the cream at the top because at the moment there are, uh, I think, eight points between the top nine clubs in the Premier League. And, and if Aston Villa win one of their three games in hands, they they go up there as well. That'll be eight points between the entire top half of the table. It, it isn't really, really tight up there. Obviously, City are absolutely flying at the moment. They're motoring. The, the Liverpool play them in, in three weeks or so, and that, that'll be a massive game. But in the meantime... Liverpool certainly can't win the league, but they can certainly blow it. Yeah, I, I, I honestly think that if, if Liverpool go into that City game um, three to six points behind City, which I think that, that is, is quite possible, I think City will, will continue to win games and I think Liverpool might draw again. So they could be three to six points, behind, at least three, maybe six points behind City. And if City win that, then I think it's done. I, I couldn't see Liverpool pulling uh, get, pulling nine ten points back over the set of, with fifteen games to play um, this season. I think City would have have more than enough to, to 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 get over the line at that point. And I'm starting to feel like it's going to go that way. I, 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 I this is very worrying. I, I was trying to say this in uh, WhatsApp. Liverpool uh, certainly the Liverpool fans that I know are so positive, overly positive. Um, I, I've I've watched enough of Liverpool this season to to know that this is something to be worried about because it's not happened before and there's no, they're not showing the signs of getting over it. I I'm a fan of a troubled club, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I I and yeah I I I I just, I just think that, that there's enough signs to 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 tell me that there's something not quite right. Look, I suppose for, for all of all of the concern and all of the poor performances and all of the bad results, at the moment, Liverpool are still three points off the top of the Premier League. For in in their their worst spell in in recent memory in three years or whatever it is, and in Manchester United's best run of form in over the last uh, three, four, or five years since Ferguson left, they're three points clear at the top of the league, and they're they're happy to take a draw. At Anfield, and I suppose that gives you the measure of where the two teams are. If Liverpool were getting beaten three or four nil yesterday and sliding down to to mid table, and look, it's it's well possible that within the next month Liverpool could be sixth, seventh, eighth, because that's how tight the league is. And yeah, I I can understand what you're saying, but it it, it this season is a season of fine margins. It, it really is. So whoever goes on to win it will need a degree of luck. And uh, uh, they, they, of course, of course, they will. But they'll also need, and they'll also need a, a degree of consistency. Um, I think we said it last week that C- City are the ones who have co- who've come into form at the right time. Is there's no use being top after 15 games, like being top before Christmas? There's there, there, there's nothing in that. It's it's the ones who who maintain form over the second half of the season who. Who 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 come out on top? It's 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 always like that. Um, well, let, 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 let's it, talk about Manchester City for a minute because they they battered Crystal Palace four 0 last night, mm. and it doesn't and pa- seem to, pa- it doesn't seem to matter what what team they put out. At, they're they're back to this Manchester City that they seem to be able to rotate six or seven players a game and, and still win them win them comfortably. Like the Zin, Zinchenko was starting at left back. They had uh, Moraes in, in goals. Fernandinho was back in the team. Bernardo Silva was back in the team. Jesus was starting up top. Uh, Sterling was on the wing, which means that the likes of Riyad Mahrez, who's been so consistent this year, was on the bench. Uh, Cancelo, who is has been the best attacking fullback in the league this year, started on the bench. Foden, who's their top goal scorer this season, was on the bench. Um, they, they, they can afford to leave guys like this out of their starting lineup and, and still go on to, to win games comfortably. 
Yeah, it's and, and that's exactly what City were doing um, when they were winning league titles so so comfortably. Um, very good for for Pep Guardiola. Um, Crystal Palace are not an easy team to to beat as well, and they've proven that against Manchester City in recent years as well. Didn't they go two two years in a row that they went to the Etihad and got at least a point? They certainly won one of those games. I remember Andros Townsend scoring an absolute. World in, 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 in one of them. Um, yeah, it, it, it looks like no matter what starting 11 City put out and no matter what team they're up against, that they're coming away with with, with all three points. Um, I, I, I think that we're going to see City win the League Cup. I think that they'll win the FA Cup. I think they might do another domestic travel, man. Just because they, 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 they look so imperious. Well, I suppose I think, I, everybody looks imperious until they get beaten, though, don't they? Well, this is true, but I, I think that the, I think they were troubled by Liverpool's rise. I think that that got to them. They they didn't really know what to do with it. Um, they narrowly got over the line in 2019. They crumbled big time uh, in 2020, but they seem to have collected themselves very well. We we talk about Liverpool's difficult run of fixtures. Uh, Manchester City's run of fixtures. Uh, they, they host Aston Villa midweek, which which could well be a tricky game, depending on what kind of shape the Aston Villa squad are in. If if that game goes ahead with with players returning yeah, from COVID, uh, uh, but they've obviously had an, a good break. So it, it depends how many players have actually been ill, been unwell, how much training they've managed to get done, and, and how fit they are. But I mean, Aston Villa have been really really good this year, especially against the top teams. So that could go almost either way. Look, they have an easy. Um, FA Cup trip to, to Cheltenham and then they go to West Brom again Liverpool got stuck going to West Brom you know how Allardyce is going to approach that game um, but then they host Sheffield United they go to Burnley before they play Liverpool before they play Spurs and before they play City before the Champions League returns so I mean those couple of weeks before the Champions League goes back the, the first couple of weeks of, of February there seems to be a, a few outrageous games on that, that could really have a lot of impact up the top yeah, and you, and you hope that these games are approached positively as well, and not how uh, the United Liverpool Liverpool United game was approached, or the United City game earlier on in the well, season. I, I think there I is a difference say, want... between those two games. I, I do think that Liverpool set out to win that game yesterday, and I do think that United thought thought they could nick something. Uh, uh, it, it was a lot more adventurous than than the Manchester derby. The Manchester derby yeah, was awful. Was. It was. It, it was. I think that Liverpool once they once United got back in the game, Liverpool were. Just their their game plan changed. They decided, no, okay. We, we, first of all, we're not. Excuse me. First of all, we're not. First and foremost, we're not going to lose. But yeah, they w- w- once they hadn't been able to find that early breakthrough, that was their their change in mentality. Um, I just want to see some really really good football. I, I feel like um, between the top se- sides, we haven't. And I, I felt a little bit disappointed yesterday, given it was it was one and three playing in the. In, in the league, the Premier League is the best league in the world, um, and I, I want to see a better quality of football between our uh, the top teams in the league than what we've been treated to. Joe, we, we've spent most of the show talking about Liverpool so far, and Liverpool this morning are fourth in the Premier League, not only behind mm. the two Manchester clubs but also behind Leicester City, who picked yeah. up who picked up a good two 0 win against Southampton, who obviously beat Liverpool a couple of weeks ago. How, how far, I know I asked you this question last week about Leicester and Everton. Everton obviously didn't have their game to play. Um, but how many teams are in this title race? Because we've talked about three today. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd still probably narrow it down to two, uh, City and, and Liverpool. I, I, I don't know. Le, 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 Leicester, Leicester didn't, excuse, excuse the noise in the background. Le, Le, Leicester, did, Leicester uh, didn't show enough last season when it mattered most. I, I rate Leicester a lot, but I, I I don't really consider them to be in in the title race. They're in the race for Champions League, but I don't think they have enough about them. They don't have a deep enough squad to compete for the Premier League title. I could be wrong, but I just don't see it. I didn't see it last season, and I don't see it this season. The same the same with Manchester United. What about Tottenham? No, absolutely not. <laughs> now, what about Everton, who don't have European uh, football to contend with? No, they're not. They're also not in the title race. Those those sides are de- are definitely in the race for top four. If if Everton win their game in hand, they're above Liverpool. They're level with Leicester and they're but level this with, is, with City. It's the same for Aston Villa. If Aston Villa win their three games in hand, they're going to be in the top four. Um, they're going to be I, second. Uh, yeah, I, they're not in the title race. They're they're in the race for top four. 
Um, the, at, at what stage do we consider the teams within a couple of points of the leaders in, in the title race? How many games to go? Five. That's it. That's <laughs> five games. <laughs> I, I, honestly, unless you've been there and done it, I think that that's fair enough. I mean, this, we're, we're going to get to a stage where Sky are putting up the, the, the title special with like 10, 15 games to go, and it has seven teams in it. But, but Leicester have been there, and Leicester have done it. A, lo- a handful Leicester, of those players Le- Le- have done Le- it. Le- Leicester won the title five years ago, and it was amazing. But since then, they haven't shown that they're capable. Leicester had a golden opportunity last season to do it. And they didn't. No, they not, not to win the league. Look, Liverpool ran away. Yes, they did. Year. Yes, yes, they did. There was a stage where they were about five points behind Liverpool just coming up to Christmas. But look, hang on. And Leicester they... City weren't going to put up 100 points last season. No, they, no, they weren't. But there was an opportunity <laughs> there. And they crumbled. And they didn't there was no opportunity there last yes, year. Yes, there was because they were second. About yes, they, look, they, they could have finished second. There was an opportunity to finish second last year. There, there, there you go. There wasn't an opportunity to win the league for Leicester last year. I'm, I'm sorry. No, there was, a, there was an opportunity for them to be up and amongst it. But and they, and they as we it. said last week, there's not going to be a crazy points tally put up this year. No, this is an 80 points season. Well, 80 something 80, points. 80, 80, 80, 85, maybe. Yeah. Well, so, if City put on a good run, you never know. It could be the, 90 look, they, plus. But. Yeah, well, they, they, they might touch 90, but I mean, it, it's within the, it's theoretically within the grasp of, of other teams. But you're not going to, you're not, I, I don't think that you're going to get five teams finishing on 80 plus points. I think the last time we saw that was um, 2000, the first time Arsenal missed out on Champions League football. What was that? 2016, 17, where Arsenal came fifth and Liverpool got 79 and Arsenal got 78. Liverpool finished fourth and Arsenal finished fifth. And that's the last time that we had a really, really, really competitive um, top five kind of, I I, I think, I think we'll see that this year, but I mean, it's not going to be a, a, a centurion, but that's good, isn't it? It makes it so much more exciting. And it makes the race for Champions League football exciting as well. Um, Manchester United have lost three games this season. City have lost two. Leicester have lost five. And Liverpool have lost two. But what that tells you is that Leicester aren't drawing games. They're being positive. They're, they're going into games, playing their own style of football. They're not, they're not afraid of, of who they're coming up against. They're, they're going to go for it one way or the other. They're not... They're not sitting back and waiting for things to happen for them. And, and that's the kind of positivity. Man, that, that, that's exactly what Brendan Rodgers is like as a manager, though. You know that more than more than me, having having had him in charge of, of Liverpool for, what, three, four years. Um, that, that's, that's how he plays his football. He's an all-or-nothing manager. He's, he's very, very positive. He wants to assert his, himself on the game. Um, they're in good form. What is it? Three wins and two draws in their last five games. And look, like we said, they they have some big games coming up as well. Uh, Even just reading the Liverpool and City fixtures, I I can tell you that they're playing both of those um, over the coming weeks as well. So look, if if they can go, if they can get through those games unscathed without getting beaten or even beating one of those teams, I think that that might change the perspective of a few people about Leicester City because they have been there in and around last year, like you said, for the best part of the season. They obviously tailed off at the end. I think there was uh, there was an injury to James Madison. I think that they they really struggled to to replace him. But Harvey Barnes looks like he's come on a lot this year, and a few of the other midfielders look like they've they've stepped up. I think they were missing Indeedy for a chunk of last season as well, so maybe they're they're in a slightly better position strength wise. Um, and obviously Jamie Vardy is still doing the doing the business up top. So as long as he stays fit, I, I'd never rule them out of of anything. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Madison was brilliant yesterday as well. He scored a wonderful goal. Um, I, lo- I love those goals when 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 the player is is very narrow, close to the touchline, and they have such a small area to to, to in which to score, and they just rifle it. Um, it was very Jamie Vardy like, like he just put his th- foot through it and it just flew into the top into the roof of the net. You want to talk about great goals this weekend? I, I don't know if you saw in uh, Dombele's finish. Um, the the cheeky lob uh, with the outside of his foot on, on half volley um, from I, a, from a ridiculous a ridiculous angle potentially one of the goals of the season I, I know you I don't like I to talk I, I didn't watch I did, I'm I'm sorry I didn't see it I know you don't like <laughs> to talk too much about Spurs but I mean it, it's it's a comfortable three one victory on the road I know it's only Sheffield yeah. United um, but Sheffield United have been coming off the back of, of two wins and would have fancied themselves going into this game yeah you can only beat what's in front of you. <laughs> is, is that all we're saying for Spurs? You can only beat what's put in front of you. That's a compliment, isn't it? I mean, you, they, they went to the bottom side in the league and they won. Yeah. Okay. Look, that that moves them within one point of Liverpool. Same goal difference. 
Yeah, that is that is crazy though. I have to say that that's that's mad. Se- seven but, uh, points between those teams at the at the turn of the at the new year, and obviously mm. they, they've narrowed the gap now to one point. So they obviously look they've been getting on about their business quietly over the last couple of weeks, moving up the table. Yeah, they have. <laughs> look, another another team, Joe. They got to win. Uh, Chelsea. We, we, we I, you, you're not making any noise there. I, I'm muted. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, West London Derby. Obviously, derbies are never easy. Uh, Fulham have uh, unbeaten in their last five games, although they drew all of them. Um, but then the, uh, Fulham started the game well, but a reckless challenge. Um, saw them reduced to ten men on the stroke of half time, and and then Mason Mount found himself with space in the box and 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 put the ball in the back of the net. Something that. Chelsea's midf- attacking midfielders and forwards have really been struggling to do. Um, has, has he been late. their most their most consistent player this season? I think so. There's a reason he starts every game. Um, we, we've obviously been unimpressed with him at times, but m- maybe we don't quite understand what he is as a player. Maybe we want him to be something that he's not. Um, maybe we want him to be Frank Lampard because he seems to have that well, ability. Frank but- Lampard made the point that Mason Mount is only 22. Frank Lampard was only moving to Chelsea at 22 and it took him a year or so to find his feet when he got there. I mean, yeah, absolutely. is that part of the burden of bursting onto the scene too early? People expect too much from you at a big club. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, it, it, I mean, to, to Mason Mount's credit, um, he was pretty good last season. I mean, do we expect, we, we probably, we definitely expect too much of players. We definitely expect them to be to be coming up with the goods every every single game. Um, and and of course that's just not that's just not possible. Like, but, um, for for example, Trent Alexander Arnold now is only twenty two, and he's he's going through maybe the lowest point of his Liverpool career at the moment. He, he seems to be giving the ball away a, a lot. He's not providing the assists that he once was. He seems a little bit almost lost in that team. But again, he's only twenty two. But because he's gone on, he's won the Champions League. He's been in two Champions League finals. He, he's won the Premier League last season, providing a record number of assists for a defender. Like when these mm. guys burst on the scene and, and set the bar so high for themselves, it, it's it's really really difficult for them to perform like that consistently year another after ex- year. Another example: John Stones, who's own, who uh, has obviously been at City for. I'm just going to pull up his Wikipedia page here because I can't remember the exact year he moved. I want to say he's been there about five years. Yeah, he's signed in 2016. Um, obviously came very highly rated, was one of England's main defenders for a few years. He's lost his place in the national team. And um, he, he didn't really feature much for City last season at the start of this season. Got his chance through through injury and he's taken it. Um, obviously scored twice on the weekend. That's that's not his main job. But he's, he's been very impressive defensively. I think he and scored he's four goals in his last... Three now, or five in his last four, or something. Yeah. He's been in incredible uh, goal scoring form. Yeah, he scored three. He, <laughs> sorry, he scored three in his last five, man. Yeah, um, he's he, he, yeah, he has, and um, he's twenty six, which is obviously coming into his prime as a centre back, or, or just about to, to to hit his prime centre back's peak later. But he's someone who who we in the football. Uh, Community. Football, football community, yeah, have been very critical of. But, but it's because these players burst onto the scene and they so, show so much. But sometimes it just, they have to go through hell to get out the other side. Yeah, so look, Mason Mount is, is, is quite good then. <laughs> and and he, maybe he's, he's got yeah. an incredibly bright future ahead of him. Yeah, I think, I think that's fair to say. Is, is he one that Chelsea should look to build our team around, maybe? They already are. I mean, he, he doesn't miss a game. Um, it'd be interesting if the if, if because he's Frank Lampard's guy. Obviously, he had him at Derby, and then they, they he comes straight into the team following following uh, Lampard's appointment to, as Chelsea manager. If Chelsea's form doesn't pick up and and, and Lampard goes, which is is, is probably uh, likely to happen, um, given how trigger happy Roman Abramovich is as an owner, um, it'd be interesting if the guy who who comes next has such a high opinion of Mason Mount. I think that think- would tell us. Joe, do you think he will get sacked? Because we spoke about how tight it is at, at the top of the league. Chelsea now are only five points off fourth place. I know, look, they want they had title aspirations, but they're only eight points off the top. United slip up do, once and they're five points off the top. Do you know do you know what? In uh, if 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 he had taken the job three, four years ago, 
I would have said yes, he would be sacked by now. But because we're in the age where you, we have people like Andrea Pirlo going to Juventus, uh, Mikel Arteta going to Arsenal, Lampard obviously going to Chelsea, big clubs are not are, are trying to go down the route of uh, highly talented former players who do not have experience or do not have a lot of experience. It's it's it's, it's a stark contrast to. Uh, Conte, um, Allegri, these guys who've, who've been there and done it. Um, so, so I think for for that reason, there has to be more patience from the board. They have to understand that this is a long term project. I, I don't think you can make that sort of appointment. And 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 it's probably what saved Arteta. I mean, Emery got sacked because he's experienced, right? I mean, he he doesn't have the excuse that Arteta has it, it, there's they ha- the clubs have to know that they're going to go through tough periods with these guys in charge look at Juventus they're not even in the top or they, they might be fourth they lost to Inter Milan yesterday Arsenal are 11th Chelsea are seventh these clubs do not want to be in these positions they want to be challenging for major honors but they believe in these guys so much that they're willing to go through uh, bad periods in, in the knowledge that going through bad periods in any walk any for any walk of life makes you stronger it's all we're, we're also obviously living in unprecedented times as well though with obviously the, the pandemic at the moment and the lack of fans in, in grounds we've spoken about how much we reckon that's hindered uh, teams like Chelsea and, and Sheffield United and, and even Liverpool to a degree that have the older grounds you know that you really do feel um, you really do feel the crowd when you're playing uh, obviously you're, you're touch tight with them and it's something we've mentioned there it obviously to do with players they, they signed a lot of players last summer that have had to come and, and, and settle and it can't have been easy for them moving their families around the world having them try to settle in a new city um, uh, uh, and it must be hard to, to form the same relationships with, with players when you're not going out with them and doing the same team building exercises and you're not having the same level of physical contact and stuff like this as well in, in training like it yeah it's it's very different and the league table itself is is so tight we've not seen a league table like this in years and like i said one one result and suddenly they're they're within a, a few points of 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 top spot I, I think it'd be crazy to make any sort of mid-season decisions because who knows what the, what the league table is going to end up looking like at the end of the season yeah i i could I completely agree. And who 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 is out there as a manager that's going to come in and do better? Well, you've, and, seen, and- you've seen Pochettino snapped up. Um, and I think he was the one that a lot of Premier League fans were saying, oh, well, Pochettino is still out there. You know, he's, he's still available. You can still go and get him. And and that's off the off the cards now, per se. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Allegri is available as well. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not 100% sold on the whole Allegri thing. And I think that the, the fact that... Um, that we're in the middle of a pandemic and that he would be moving to a new country and he wouldn't. This is the, a good point that you made about Chelsea is that we're in the middle of a pandemic. They've signed loads of players and the players are not able to come into London and do the normal things that people moving to London would be able to do. Yeah. London's an amazing city and they're not able to get anything out of it right now. They're just having, to, I mean, they obviously have so much money. They, their houses, I'm sure, are very comfortable, but still it's, it's not the environment that you want to be coming in. I'm sure it feels very strange that, that they can't go and have the full London experience and immerse themselves in in what it is. Right, very quickly, there's a couple of games left that we want to talk about. Obviously, the Black Country Gar- uh, Black Country Derby, uh, West Brom beat Wolves three two, and this has massive repercussions for for both sides. I think for the first time all season, West Brom fans might think that they potentially have a chance at avoiding relegation. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just just looking at the table. Um, they're five points off 17th, but Burnley have a game in hand on them. But it's suddenly so it, 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 it's a bit of hope, isn't it? I mean, a win, a win, a win can can change your season around, as, as, especially a derby win like that. Um, I, I, I'm still not convinced that West Brom can stay up. I, I think they have too much to do, and I don't I don't think their squad is 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 up for. No, I it's think I think people would say to do what's necessary. People would sit, expect them to go down, but as like you said, it does provide that that glimmer of hope. But I know that you really wanted to talk about Wolves. Mm. I mean, what's uh, I've been very disappointed with Wolves since their win at, at Arsenal um, in in December or late November. Very very disappointed. I, I I know that they're missing Raúl Jiménez, but 
they take the game against Brighton that they had um, a couple of weeks ago, where they were three one up, and they couldn't see the game out. And this is a Wolves side that is usually so good at holding on to a point, um, holding on to a one nil, but they couldn't they couldn't um, hold on to a two goal lead against a side that have struggled so badly to score goals in recent yeah, they, times. They, they were in front against West Brom at the break as well. And that's, they were. It that's was two, six was goals it? conceded against West Brom and Brighton in the last two games. Yeah, it's, re- it's, it's, re- it's, it's, it's really not good enough. Um, man, they're in 14th place. Uh, Newcastle have two games in hand on them. At uh, what stage do behind. they get sucked into the relegation battle? <sighs> I re- I don't I I can't see that, but I mean, if if in ten games time they're still not over the thirty point line, I think that there's cause for concern. But that, th- this is not good enough from a Wolves perspective. This is this was the team that was the best of the rest two seasons in a row. Came out of the championship. Um, they they were the best championship winners in in history. I think that that was a a, a well known fact. Yeah. They 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 secured the transfers of um, Rui Patricio, uh, João Mart- Martinho, Raúl Jiménez, players um, obviously linked to the Portuguese league or the Portuguese national team. That's that's where they they get most of their players from for obvious reasons. Um, what I'm trying to say is that their squad is good. It's not a championship level squad. It's a squad that uh, has been molded with players who have won a European championship, who have competed in the Champions League and, and the Europa League um, season in, season out. And uh, for them to be languishing in 14th place with the possibility of going, getting sucked into the, the relegation battle is, is, is far from where they need to be. Maybe they're another team that are suffering from the, from the lack of fans as well. Look, your your team Arsenal don't suffer from from a lack of fans at, at the moment. I, I think that um, that that's widely recognised that that fans wouldn't wouldn't help the Arsenal situation. But they, they do seem to have turned a corner in recent weeks. Obviously, didn't get the result they wanted um, last week. They play again tonight, um, so we, we'll let you off the hook for the for the analysis again. <laughs> but. Um, hopefully we'll be back to do a, a second show later on in the weekend and you can fill us all in on, on how they're getting on. Do you expect them to win tonight? Against Newcastle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, look- it'll it, it be, it be a cagey game. It'll be shocking. If, if, if you have something better to do tonight, listeners, then don't watch that, but <laughs> I'll be tuning in. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, look, thanks. We'll get your full analysis hopefully later on in the week. We're hoping to do a, a second show on, on Thursday. So we'll talk mm. to you then. Guys, th- thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, remember to subscribe to whatever platform you are watching, listening, consuming us on. Remember to, to like the video, share the content around. Uh, Joe, thanks very much for joining me as always. Thanks, Rafe. Um, technical difficulties again. Let's hope that the, the next one we don't have any technical difficulties. It's been, it's been a, a nightmare to get started. But yeah, great show. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and talk to you soon. Cheers. Thanks, mate.